Almost 500 million people in the world have had COVID, including about 3.5 million in Canada and 80 million in the US. And many of these people have been left with long-term symptoms called long COVID. So what do we know about this new condition? Let's get into it. Early in the pandemic, people who got COVID started noticing that many of their symptoms didn't go away after the initial infection. These people called themselves long haulers. They started sharing their experiences on social media and they invented a hashtag called long COVID. And because these people made their voices heard, scientists started studying the problem and long COVID is now a scientifically recognized disease. Long COVID is defined by symptoms that persist for more than four weeks after the initial COVID infection or that start after the infection and linger beyond four weeks. People with long COVID can report symptoms for weeks or months, and in some cases, over a year. We now have many studies of long COVID, and the proportion of people who can develop this varies anywhere from one in 10 to one in three patients who got infected. And even kids can get long COVID. It happens less often than in adults, but it can happen, and we're still learning more about it. What's important here is that although long COVID appears to be more common in people who were very sick and got hospitalized, it's also often seen in people who had mild infections. And people report a very wide variety of symptoms. Just like the acute infection, the long-term effects can involve almost any organ system in the body, from the brain to the heart, the lungs, the gastrointestinal system, the muscles, and others. And those symptoms can be mild or they can be debilitating. For example, people often lose their sense of smell and even their ability to taste during the COVID episode. And many of my patients tell me that they still can't taste their coffee for months after their COVID is over. Other common symptoms can be general things like fatigue and muscle aches or weakness. They can also be respiratory symptoms like shortness of breath, chest tightness and chest pain, or neurologic symptoms like headaches or symptoms of anxiety and depression. People also report something called brain fog, which affects concentration and memory. Here's how one patient described it. It's extremely strange. I just can't seem to find words and articulate myself. I have to look up stuff that I've never had to look up. I forget where I'm going, what I want to do. But is there anything you can do to protect yourself from long COVID? Well, the best way is to avoid getting COVID altogether. But if you do catch the virus, if you're vaccinated, not only will you have less symptoms during the infection, but we now have multiple studies showing that the chances of those symptoms persisting and becoming long COVID are at least 50% lower compared to if you hadn't been vaccinated. And if you're not vaccinated and you get long COVID, it's still not too late. Several studies now show that many people experience an improvement in the symptoms of long COVID when they get their vaccine, like this patient did. When I got to about 17 months, I had my second vaccination. And after the vaccination, about two weeks after the vaccination, I noticed that I started to feel quite a bit better and a lot of my symptoms started to subside and I started to feel about 85% normal again. Although vaccines can help, they don't help everyone. And unfortunately, we don't have specific treatments for long COVID because we don't really understand what causes it. Studies show that some people develop damage to specific organs in the body after COVID, but in many cases, even extensive testing does not give the answer. I had two CT scans with contrast. I had an EKG, I had many blood tests, I had an exercise test, a few respirology tests, um, asthma test, and all of those tests came back negative. There was nothing wrong with me as far as they could see, but I was still experiencing all of these symptoms. What we suspect is that because the body's own immune system causes inflammation and damage in the process of fighting off the virus, part of the problem may be that the immune system itself remains activated long after the initial infection. The good news is that there are more and more clinics now specializing in long COVID. Patients have also created online and social media support groups that provide a sense of community. The fifth ER doctor that I visited told me to join the Facebook support group if I had any further questions which has actually been a huge help because it's really nice to talk to people who have been going through the exact same thing as me. Scientists around the world are now collaborating to get a better understanding of long COVID. The US National Institutes of Health has committed $1 billion to long COVID research. And there are over 200 ongoing studies trying to understand the causes of long COVID, its consequences, and how it can be prevented and treated. Lots of people have had COVID and many of them are experiencing long-term symptoms. We're still learning about how this happens and what we can do about it. But if you or a loved one is experiencing long COVID, know that you're not alone. Help is on the way.